All right. Good morning, guys, or good afternoon or good evening. Whenever you're listening to this, we're going to do a little read aloud, continuing our work on insects and um, learning all about their life cycle and um, how they live. And we're also going to focus a little bit today on vocabulary and um, using the pictures to really add to the text. We talked about that before where we looked at how do the images contribute to the text. Some of you may remember that. Um, remember we learned that word contribute and we had a little bit of trouble with it. So remember contribute just means how does it add to. Um, also just like in class, I'm going to read this in two parts. It's actually a really long text. So um, just like normally in class, we read part of a book and then the next time we'll finish it up. So this is actually going to be a part one and a part two. Okay, so let's get started. Like I said, it's kind of a long book. So it's called Butterflies and Moths. And they, we're going to learn about how they're similar and how they are different. Look at this butterfly. Isn't that beautiful? That's a moth. Introduction. Butterflies and moths can be beautiful to watch. People plant gardens to attract butterflies. Butterflies at zoos and city gardens draw large crowds. However, no one builds a garden to attract moths. Many people think of moths as pests. And if you don't know what the word pest means, it means it's something that's kind of annoying or that you like don't want around. When something is a pest, it's something that's bothering you. So they're saying people think that moths are actually pests. So how are butterflies and moths the same and how are they different? What makes a butterfly a butterfly? What makes a moth a moth? To answer these questions, we need to learn about their body parts, life cycle, and behavior. Do you know, the largest butterfly in the world is the Queen Alexandra's bird wing. From wingtip to wingtip, it can be as wide as 30 centimeters or 12 inches, so that's one foot, which is the size of one whole ruler. It is found in Papua New Guinea. That's an island um, over near um, Asia. So here's the photograph of it. Remember we said we're going to look at how do the pictures contribute to the text. So this image adds to the text because it's able to show us what this butterfly looks like. See how this text box is connected? It basically becomes its caption. So it's showing us exactly what that butterfly looks like. Now we can't really see it with its wingspan and the wingspan means how long its wings are. So meaning from tip to tip. So it's measuring from the very top of one wing and it would be all the way over to the other tip when its wings are spread wide open. So that is pretty interesting to know that that's the largest butterfly in the whole world. What are butterflies and moths? Butterflies and moths are insects. Like all insect species, they are invertebrates, which means they have no backbone. Instead, they have a hard skin called an exoskeleton that protects their soft insides. They also have six legs, a body divided into three parts, two antenna, and two compound eyes. So a lot of important bold words they put right there in that paragraph. So we have species, which means different kinds of insects or animals. Um, invertebrates, that means that it has no spine or backbone like how humans do. Humans are vertebrates. Um, other mammals, fish are also vertebrates because they have a spine that runs the length of our back but insects do not, they're invertebrates. They don't have a spine. So this says they have that hard skin and it has the exoskeleton, which is basically the shell on the outside of their body. And we know the antenna, most of you know, it's the little um, parts that come up from their head. It also says their wings are covered with scales, which are like fine flat hairs. These scales protect the wings from getting too wet and help them hold in heat. Butterflies cannot fly if they are too cold. They often sit in the sun to warm up before flying. So that's a lot of interesting facts. So we have a photograph here, a little one of a butterfly, which has these really cool wings that extend out. And then here is another image. I don't know if you remember what this text feature is called, this type of image, but it's a picture that has labels. We call that a diagram. So it's pointing out the different parts of the butterfly. So this is actually an illustration, not a photograph, but it does have the labels, which still makes it a diagram. So it's showing us here's the body, the legs, of course, the tube-like mouth that's called the proboscis. It has its eyes, the antenna, and the wings. And then here it's zooming in. Here's a little, um, a little zoomed in picture of what the scales would look like in the wings. So it's hard to tell when it's zoomed out like this, 
But that's what it's saying is when it's zoomed in, it has these little scales that protect it. Butterflies and moths have many of the same body parts, so it is easy to see why people have trouble telling them apart. So here's another diagram, this time with photographs showing us, okay, here's a butterfly, here's a moth, and what's the same about them? So they both have antenna, they both have heads, they both have the thorax, which is part of their body, and the abdomen, which is the lower part of their body. They both have wings, and even their wings, you might notice they have patterns on them, um, that are specific to their species. And we also know that they can be similar sizes. So a lot of things are actually really the same about them. So their head has compound eyes made up of many smaller eyes, allowing them to see all around them, antenna to smell and sense movement. Mouth is a long tube for sucking nectar. So their thorax, which is their middle part of their body, has two pairs of wings, three pairs of legs, and breathing holes. Remember, this is all stuff that's the same. Their abdomen, which is the lower part of their body, has their digestive organs, reproductive organs, and breathing holes. And here's another text box. Do you know more than 165,000 kinds or species of butterflies and moths exist? Most of these are moths. It is believed that another 100,000 species exist that have not been studied or identified, which means that we haven't even found them or discovered them or know anything about them yet which is pretty crazy to think that there are moths that are on there flying around that we don't even know what they are. However, butterflies and moths are also different from each other in many ways. The next time you find a butterfly or moth, use this chart to help you tell which kind of insect you have found. So again, we have the two photographs comparing them. Here's a butterfly, here's a moth. Mo here's a butterfly. Most are active during the day. Most are brightly colored skinny body without fur or having like the little hairs on them. Most have antenna with knobs. Most rest with their wings above their body. Enlarged lobe on each hind wing that provides overlap, meaning this part here, how it's like bigger, you see that? Like it overlaps. And here's moss. Most are active at night. Most are dull in color. They have bat furry bodies. You can kind of see here, it has like little hairs on it which is different than the butterfly, which is like a little bit skinnier and they don't have those little hairs. Plain or feathery antenna, and you can see their antenna here has like little hairs, little feathers, whereas the butterfly has just the skinny antenna. Most rest with their wings spread out flat at the sides of their body. If you've, they're talking about like when they're not flying. So when a butterfly, you know, you've ever seen it just come to rest on a leaf or a flower, they kind of put their wings back away from them, like kind of fold them up. Whereas when a moth lands on something like you know, on a door or on a flower, or on a leaf, its wings are still spread out. It doesn't close them up when it sits. And they have tiny hook or bristle that link each forewing and hind wing while in flight. So it's saying their wings are actually linked together and not overlapping. That's really interesting. Here's their life cycle. After a pair of male and female butterflies or moths mate, the female lays her eggs. She lays them on or near leaves, twigs, or flowers so that her young will have something to eat when they hatch. So here's a lobster moth egg, there's a moth egg, and a white butterfly egg. So we can already see that their eggs do not look the same, but what did it say here? That they lay them on the leaves, twigs, or flowers. So that's something that's also the same. Here's a swallowtail caterpillar crawls out of its egg. So remember talking about how the image contributes to the text, how does it add to it? So this image here is not only showing us the caterpillar, which is every new butterfly or moth. Remember they, they start out different than when they look when they're adults. Remember we talked about how their life cycle changes. So this is it hatching from its egg and it's showing us what it looks like. It's also showing us that it's still on that leaf where the egg was laid. When eggs hatch, caterpillars come out. This begins the larval stage of the butterfly and moth life cycle. So here's that vocabulary word, the larval. That's basically what we call like the baby stage of a lot of insects. When they hatch from their egg, we call them lar larva or larvae. And what that means is it's kind of like the baby stage, um, you know, where humans are babies or, you know, like um, when a dog has a baby, it's a puppy. You know, those are kind of like the word they use for that stage of its life. So before it's even really a caterpillar, it's in the larval stage. Caterpillars have chewing mouth parts 
and can eat 27,000 times their body weight during their lifetime. Their egg case is often their first meal, followed by the leaf or flower they're on, and then the rest of the plant. So that means that once they hatch, they eat the egg that they were in, they start eating the leaf, and they basically just keep eating that plant. They just eat all the time. A caterpillar's job is to eat and grow. As it grows, its skin becomes tight and breaks away. A new skin grows in its place to allow the caterpillar to get bigger. This is called molting. A caterpillar molts four or five times during its life. The caterpillar is fully grown after about two weeks. So the molting stage is, like it said, it's shedding its skin off. So it molts four or five times, whereas it grows, its skin is like too small. It's like it's like as you guys grow, your pants don't fit anymore. You got to go buy new pants because they don't they don't button. So it's like that. Their skin doesn't fit anymore, so they shed their skin and they have new skin underneath that's nice and big and stretched. The life of caterpillars is filled with danger. They are food for many larger animals, such as lizards, birds, bats, and small mammals. Caterpillars have many interesting ways to protect themselves from being eaten. Some caterpillars have spines and other hairs that make them taste bad to predators. Others have colors or patterns on their bodies that make them appear more dangerous than they are. Caterpillars also can be masters at hiding, blending in with their background, or staying still until night comes or until the danger goes away. The swallowtail butterfly caterpillar has red horns that release a strong odor to keep away predators. Many caterpillars feed on plants that make them taste bad to birds and other enemies. These caterpillars often are brightly colored to warn others, do not eat me. And here's an owl butterfly caterpillar. All right, this is where we're gonna stop for today. So I want you to make sure that when you finish, go back to your assignment, leave a comment and tell me one thing that you learned from this portion of the text and then go and do your exit ticket. And I will see you guys on the next video.